Welcome back. Today we are continuing our discussion on Point IO. As you can see in front of you, I have uh, the same rack that we've configured in the previous lecture. You will notice, however, a couple of differences since the beginning of the previous lecture, where I mentioned a couple of different lights which were indicating different errors on the status of the module. So you'll notice that the light down here is green. It's also green here and we have network traffic. So it's definitely communicating back to the Compact Logix PLC. You'll also notice that the two lights for the rightmost modules are also green on the network side. So this means that they have been properly configured and everything is ready to go. In case you're wondering about this output module, and the blinking red lights. This is essentially a specialty module, which is not only a direct output, but it's also, it has diagnostics built in. So it's detecting essentially that there's nothing plugged in. As you can see, there's zero wires on the output side and it's detecting uh, the simple fact that there's nothing plugged into the module. So this is not a major fault. It is just indicating that something has been removed and this can be used like a detection method in the field. So for example, if a sensor has been cut off, it has been lost, or it's for example, in a remote area where it can be disconnected by operators. So it just gives you another layer or another opportunity to double check your system. That being said today, we're going to wire in a simple sensor just for verifying for the purpose of verifying that everything is working and without any further delays let's get started before we get started with today's video we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the solus plc youtube channel and this includes industrial automation plc programming as well as hmi development and if you enjoy this type of content we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel so the sensor in question is a six sensor model WL12-3P2431. It is a very common sensor that I use or have seen used in manufacturing practices. So it's a retro reflective sensor, which essentially utilizes this other piece on the other side. And if placed opposite to this reflector, it can detect objects going through. So for example, this is used as a simple counter for the number of boxes produced by a machine. And once we power on the sensor through the use of the point IO uh, points, you'll notice that there's, there's going to be LED lights indicating that the sensor is outputting. And to look at the wiring, so we're going to be using this connector on the bottom of the sensor, which is essentially requiring us to have an M12 plug. As you can see, it has 12, uh, four different pins and they're going to be labeled here. So there's going to be brown, blue, black, and white. And for those of you who are not familiar, that refers to the standard on many, many this, uh, different industrial equipment uh, pieces. But essentially there's going to be this same plug with the wire color code on the other side. So as you can see, this will made into the sensor. And then here we have the blue, brown, and black. And if we look at their descriptions, the Brown is essentially going to be our 24 volts. The blue is going to be our ground or zero volts. Then we have the black and the white, which are going to be essentially the signals which are sent back from the signal to our PLC system. And we'll look at, we'll look at the wiring in just a second, but it's just very important to understand that the sensor needs to match the appropriate card. And in this case, we'll look at the voltage. So as you can see here, it's a DC 10 to 30 volts class two sensor. And essentially that indicates to us that it needs to be made it to this input card. The first two cards our input cards on the 24 volts side. If you were to plug it into the output, of course, the sensor is not going to do anything. And if you're going to plug it into the any of the 110 VAC cards, you risk damaging the sensor. So it's very, very important to make sure that the inputs that you're wiring in are going to be specific to the cards that you're going to be using. So before we plug in the sensor, we can essentially just wire in the cable. And I'm trying to look over this at the same time as I talk, but you'll notice that there's going to be points uh, for the voltage side. So you'll see here that my power supply is coming in and then I have a jumper to the other side where remember we have the isolation power supply. And since I have no other points on this side and I don't have a 
need to plug in more sensors i'm just going to use the empty slots on the bottom here and you'll notice that i am using the same color code as the wire just to make it simpler and you should always strive to do so yourself so what i'm going to do here is essentially loosen the screw at the bottom and i'm going to put in the brown cable where it belongs i'm going to tighten that connection and i just want you to see the entire procedure so that you are comfortable doing this once you encounter the module yourself next i'm going to land the blue cable and of course you should be doing this in many cases in a power down facility but since we're working with very low voltages and i've done this many many different times before i feel confident that there's going to be no problems with me managing these cables on my workbench so the last bit or the last wire that we have is this black wire and this like i've mentioned is going to be the status of the sensor which is essentially the input and remember that here we have a eight input card and we're going to based on the um based on the essentially on the data sheet of this card we're going to use the first input that we are going to have available in this case we have all of them available so we're just going to land that in this first first hole right here and i'm going to tighten the screw just i did just like i did with the other connections so let's see here perfect so essentially the way this card works is when we have 24 volts going to it it's going to set a bit in the logic but let's look at the hardware first so how do we verify the hardware so of course we do need to plug in the sensor so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to tighten this connector on to the sensor and there's going to be a little notch if you um if you look at the connection connection closely there's a little notch which allows you to only plug in into one direction so essentially you can't really make a mistake you shouldn't force the hardware either you'll notice that immediately there's going to be this green led which comes on on the sensor and that means that everything is powered on cl correctly i'm trying to get the camera to focus a little bit better so that you can see that without any blur but essentially the sensor is working as expected everything is good on that side you will notice that still we have no lights on the input side on the module that's because the reflector is required for that sensor to operate so i'm going to put a reflector on this side and i'm going to point the sensor in that direction so you have maybe noticed two different things so first of all there's going to be this led that came on on the sensor but there's also an led which came on on the input module as you can see that little zero comes on um as you would expect when the sensor is triggered and of course when something passes in front of the sensor so think of it like putting your hand in front of the reflector then the sensor comes off and as you can see on the bottom this zero comes on and off when it's being blocked and that's how you can create a simple program of essentially counting how many products have passed through the use of point io and of course there's going to be different operations you can send outputs to valves you can read um, high voltage inputs and outputs the similar way but this is the basic principle of operation of the sensor as well as the input going back into this card before we put all of this aside and look at the program what i want you to uh, to learn is that this input card like i said it has eight distinct inputs and it is going to require a 24 volts in order to trigger that specific input i'm also going to zoom in just for a little bit i'm going to try and zoom in a lot so you'll notice that there's going to be an input for each or there's going to be an indicator for each single input and when that input is on then there's going to be that light that comes on and this is the easiest way to troubleshoot in the field without having access to your plc that the sensor is essentially sending a signal and that the input is being triggered on the proper side so if you're doing some maintenance if you're doing maybe some new installation then you can trigger the sensor through the means of just using your hand and you can see which input is being triggered on the point io rack now on the plc side remember that we've created a definition for each one of our cards so here since we've wired in our sensor into this input zero on the first slot of our rack we do need to look at the tag which is appropriate for that specific input so if i select the specific card 
On the bottom here, you'll notice that there's going to be a module a definition tags, and that's going to be point IO rack one, and then it's going to be one input or one C. So let's scroll all the way up and we're going to double click on controller tags. Once this is open, I can essentially expand this so you, we can see a little bit better. We need to scroll down to that same definition. So this is going to be point IO rack one, uh, one, and then there's going to be a C. So this is not correct. So point IO rack one, one input. And you'll notice that there's going to be several booleans. Let's go into monitor tags. And I'm just going to expand that once again. You'll notice all zeros. And I'm going to just trigger this sensor off camera for you so that you could see that as soon as that zero comes on and uh, lights up in the in the rack, then there's going to be a transition from a zero to a one on the PLC side. And that's how you can start utilizing that specific tag for the sensors that you've wired in in your code on the PLC side. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.